You cannot love money and love God at the same time. How many understand that? Because behind tithing, God wants to deal with the spirit of greed and covetousness. That's why he teaches you. Someone will look at you, earn 500,000 francs. God is saying, bring me 50,000 francs to my church where you have been growing. You are still looking at it and there is 450,000 left at home. You are still looking at the 50 and it's too much. It's greed. It's a spirit and that spirit is satanic. It's the love for mammon, love for money. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Amen. It will not take over you again. Amen. I told Satan sometime the day you ever remind me the money is too much, I will double it on the spot. You understand that? So I want to type 50,000 francs. You say it's too much, I will add 50 on top. Immediately. I don't want to think twice. What do I own? I am managing God's property. I own nothing. So if you tell me that what I'm giving to God who owns all things and gave them to me to give back is too much, are you crazy or what? Any voice that tells you you are giving too much for church work is not of God. You heard something. Any voice, I don't care. Any voice, including a human voice that tells you you are giving too much for church, is not of God. Where else should we give our money? You know, people are always contributing money somewhere. I made a post on that regarding this study. People are always contributing money somewhere. People are always contributing money somewhere. Whether you like it or not, you'll be contributing money somewhere. And God owns all the money. Whether it's post club veteran like that here, or you are contributing in drinking and feeding people where you will never have anything in return. But when you lay up treasures in heaven, where rod more thieves cannot break in and steal, what will happen? Your heart will be about heavenly things. And God rewards you for laying up treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Many deprive church of money to, de to develop projects in church, buy chairs and all of that, give to sustain the church. What happened? They took and gave it to Bitcoin also. <laughs> and went into cryptocurrency. What was the result? Many had high blood and they came back to the same pastors. They refused to bless for prayer and also. Yes. See, God is not stupid. You put your money where gifts and laws can crack at any time and see your problem. It's a principle. 100% of the money God blesses me with his money in my care belongs to the church. As a matter of priority. I don't care. Any other thing is secondary. It's my principle. I haven't studied this. It's a crazy way. I see Christians who contribute more than 50% for village development projects, like construction of palaces to keep mass graves there and destroy more souls. And they cannot do the same for the church. They think church work should be trivialized. It's the same misplaced priority. They don't know anything. They are abusers of God's resources because they are targeting the wrong things with God's money. It's wrong. I don't do that. And everyone knows like that. You will like hate me. I'm not interested in traditional titles anyway. Hallelujah. You cannot love God and love mama. Love money. God says so. You cannot love me and money at the same time. And God calls money God. Money is a God. It controls people. God will always assess your giving to him in monetary terms. Did he ever? Money is powerful. When you want to see whether you have a heart for God, convert what you have to give to him in terms of money. Mm -hmm. We can have about less than a kilogram of gold right here. It will be worth more than four billion. Four, I mean, yeah, four billions. See, that's forty thousand. Yeah, for a four billions, uh, a bit. Yeah, four thousand millions. It's a four billion. Huh? Once that money is now available, cash to begin to disperse is a problem. But you will give the gold, it's easy. Money therefore touches hearts. Money is a spirit. Money will control destinies. Uh, I may take your time a lot, but today I want you to hear this, it will change you. Whenever it's difficult for money to come out of your hands and be used for a church project, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Praise God. God will always assess your giving in monetary terms. I have so much to say. Because he wants your heart in the kingdom. He wants your heart. Where your treasure is. The word heart there means your thinking, your meditations, your thought processes, your imaginations, your expectations. Once you pump more money in church, won't you think that church works should prosper? So when we take more money and we put it into secular businesses, we'll be thinking about it. You want to make us, you want to follow on, make sure that the business is going on to a true of us. God wants priority in his kingdom where good management exists. I didn't test your addiction to money. Hello? Hi. Everyone must be tested. How much you are addicted to money? Okay. A church has an urgent need. You don't know the difference between being urgent and important. 
all things are important on earth, but not everything is urgent. There is a need, and that need, if you contribute just 5,000 francs will change, you decide to save your money for your future use. You don't have a heart for God yet. You have not disciplined yourself enough. Hallelujah. Tithing is a test of greed, covetousness, and indiscipline. Tithing will test you. It's easy with offering because you just put your hand and look left and right and come and draw 100 francs, no problem. Let me repeat it. That people massively gathered in church is not an equivalence of giving. You cannot use that to say why the way people came to the means there will be a lot of money, right? Some people who are desperate after money ministries have done that when they see more people come to church, they just take additional offerings. It doesn't work like that. Don't mistake. People are coming to be fed spiritually. And it's my job to teach you the word very well so you understand the mind of God. Say where my treasure is. Where my treasure is. Then my heart will be also. Then my heart So if your treasure is in the kingdom of God, your heart will be right there. I bless you. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, hard love for money, or rather hard love for God is tested. How do I, you know anything you love, you serve, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Anything that you love, you will want to serve it. Please understand this. Is anything you love, you serve. Therefore, anything you love, you become loyal to it. You want to do what this is it. You cannot tell me you love God and you are not willing to do what He tells you to do. My God. All scripture is given by God. Did you say so? Yes. God says, tithe. Give where you are being fed spiritually. If you claim to love God, you will do what He tells you to do. This verse means a lot to me. It's the word of God. Uh, it's not taken out of context. The mother said to the servants, do whatsoever He tells you to do. You remember the wedding in Cana? Yes. When they were out of wine? That scripture, look at that verse again. Is God asking me to do anything that he's asking me to do now? Have I been doing it? Because my goal, the objective in all this book launching and teaching on tithing, all this wise, is to help you practice the word. Blessings are on you. God does not use people. Praise God. So look at 1 John 5 verse 3. How do we know that we love God when we obey what? <laughs> does God love souls to be saved? Does God want souls to be saved? Yes. Did God create the church? Did he start the church? Yes. Come on, did God start it? Yes. I will build my church, yes. meaning you and me. But we need to be meeting regularly to share his mind and get to learn his ways, right? Yes. So God loves his church to do what prosper. Does God want other souls that are already saved, saved? Yes. Romans chapter 10 says, how can they go, verse 14 forward, unless they are sent? How would they even hear the word of God unless someone talks to them? And how will they talk to the one and say, that means that we need to train who? Pastors. We need to train evangelists. We need to equip them. How do we equip them? Tithing serves the purpose. And regular offerings. How dare someone thinks that my love for God means I should refuse what he wants me to do? This is how to expand the word. And look at some practically asked questions. You will see exactly what your job should be. Hallelujah. Amen. And God's commandments are not difficult. See, look at that. See, they are not, they're not difficult. It's slightly difficult. It's not for you, anyone who wants to do it. Look at practical tithing in conclusion now. It should be thought out carefully. Next thing, it must be deliberate. You must mean it. Next thing, it should be done with what? Understanding. You must do it with understanding. Understanding comes like what you have heard right now. Right now, you leave from here, you are tired, you will be struggling. No, no, you just know, okay, this is, I have a duty as a kingdom citizen. I have a responsibility and obligation to my church as a Christian. This, is, this man of God has been blessing my life. This ministry is genuinely touching me. I can give. This is where God wants me to be planting. Because you don't plant seeds on barren ground. True of us. Majority in the religious setups are like that. They call us tongue-speaking people, Pentecostal people, yet when they have needs, they run to us. We pray for them and bless them. They go back to their churches and give thanksgiving. And the pastors are irresponsible and dishonest. Because before you stand here to give a thanksgiving, and last I checked, I didn't minister to your family. Hey, wait. You are giving thanksgiving for this? Who prayed for you? And if I hear it was a different man of God, effective immediately, thanksgiving close. Go and give a testimony right there. That's being honest. You don't take someone else's credit. Because testimony should go with thanksgiving appreciation, which is giving to the Lord. You don't talk just in your mouth. When you talk, give something. Bernice did that, and history of this church has a as the first Thanksgiver, first person, and it's my record. 
You will ever give a test. All right, yeah. See, it goes like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. You understand what I just said, right? Praise God. So we must not be manipulative and conniving. Hallelujah. Now, next thing is this. Let's just round off quickly. Tithing blesses the work of God and blesses you. Two of us. Malachi chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. The promises there are figurative. If you want to reflect those promises on Israel as a nation, you will speak to them in their time as agricultural people. You and me, we are doing something. Don't we need God's hand on what we are doing? Don't we need it? Don't we need it? God ensure it's a spiritual thing. In the conclusion on this book, I've simply said, okay, if you know you are able to deal with the devourer yourself, don't tithe. Praise God. The promises and the blessings do not just end in the verses 11 and 12. Go to verse 17 of Malachi 3. God says, in the day I'm opening up my jewels to bless people, you will remember. That verse actually means the day I'm pouring out financial blessings and rewards to people. And verse 18 says, many will come up and see the difference between those who say is futile to serve the Lord and those who truly serve him. So serving the Lord in tithes and offerings is actually what? Uh, rather, giving tithes and offerings are an act of serving the Lord. And God says, I will distinguish you. Look at verse 18 of Malachi 3. I will distinguish you. They will come back, and when they see you, there will be a difference between you and them. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. There are men coming out of this place so distinguished in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, beware. This is conclusion. I'm ending here now. Beware of all arguments against tithing, especially if you understood the mind of God. Beware. I don't care how much people are schooled. I don't care whether I will be labeled a narcissist. I don't care whether they will call me someone who is teaching the law. I don't care. I have seen practically the mind of God. There is wisdom in tithing. Every minister of God, every ministry that chooses to do what God says to do will be blessed. There are churches that have constructed mega structures never taking any loan from no government. How did they do it? They understood the biblical principle of stewardship and implemented it at their levels. They understood the principle of tithing, regular offering, and sacrificial offering. Next book I'm writing, which will take me two years or three to finish, is on offerings. I'll show sure from a scriptural perspective what offerings are about. And one of them, half of that book will cover sacrificial offering, because that's what I like practicing the most besides tithing. It's your regular, consistent contribution. Tithing is not enough for me, it's too small. A tithe is too small to give to God. When you think what is done to you, you have to give much more. Praise God. Praise God. This be our year of the rediscovery of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Conclusion of the matter. Let me show practical how to not type. Here this. Principle number one. God owns so many things. Welcome, man of God. Pastor God love. Aha. Uh -huh. Right all the way far from uh, Bamboo, yeah? So, no, Bam oh, yeah, but my six. Very far off place. After Bamboo, yeah. After Bamboo, yeah. Good to see you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. I'm honored. Honored to see you. Here it is in conclusion. Please let me demonstrate something quickly. <laughs> God owns how many things? Are you sure? No, no, no. Are you sure? Okay. So, all the money in your keeping, including the ones you have been saving, who owns it? God. So, God now says, I want you to tithe. That means if you are blessed with 1,000 francs this week, or let's say 10,000 francs this week, who owns the 10,000 francs? God. Tithe from less, how much? One tenth. 1,000 francs. So, when you bring the 1,000 to give to God beside offerings, how much is left at home? Principle number one tithe and offering is your privileged opportunity to thank God for what is reserved at home for you to manage. When you are giving as an act of service, you are actually thanking, you are saying, God, thank you for letting me use what is left at home. Did you hear that? Yes. Next thing, when you give the tithe and the nine ten is left with 9,000 francs, who owns the 9,000 francs at home? Oh, are you sure? Yes. You caught me right there. I thought you would say you now. <laughs> because we established you own nothing. 100% belongs to the Lord. From that nine ten, he can give you wisdom on how to invest, how to save, what to give up. And he makes sure that he delivers you from problems where you'll be misusing money. There was a time I was praying for someone, the issue was too prolonged. And I thought, something is not right. So I asked God, what do I do? He told me, tell her to go start tithing. That's all. I'm like, when I was saying to her, I and when I said she got so offended, I knew, okay. Imagine that. That was the basis for her healing. When she started it, everything changed. 
the sickness is left automatically, no amount of prayer. I mean, we must understand that there are mysteries in this state. And mysteries can only be revealed to you and me. We cannot teach mysteries. God only needs to reveal to you. You need to ask yourself, is tithing really necessary? Why did God institute it in the first place? We are not the Israelites, so the law does not apply to us. But what is the principle in tithing? If I understand the principle which teaches me discipline, accountability, honesty, loyalty, I will faithfully tithe because I want the church of God to prosper. It's that simple. That is what this book is all about. I pray this message blesses you. Unfortunately, I wouldn't talk less than this, uh, but I hope your time here is not wasted. Hallelujah. So quickly, we'll end here. Give the Lord a clap offering.